Welcome to another new episode of Good Morning UX. No, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, the signals is not so good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, your microphone again. It's not working. Mm, I'm not, oh, I noticed in my appeared the... every time. You can see the technical issues here, so you can follow us, send Hello. tips about that. But Hello. it has a lot of problems Hello. when you talking Hello. about. Okay, now it's, it's working. working. Yeah. Maybe maybe this micro microphone is not uh, leading so well with the the, the, the when you yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know. Well, Buriti, are you ready? right now yeah. okay okay yeah. okay so guys people we have another new super guest another classic ux author right again uh, yeah jared oh oh, oh I, yeah, I Jared. Jared it. it's more yeah 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 but jared's more um uh tech author like a dev author and usability yeah well, well yeah. when you're talking about yeah when you talk about books but articles he has now he's a lot of bo uh, yeah, articles yeah. and now he's talking about leadership right yeah so, yeah mainly so, his uh, community uh, this yeah yeah leader leader i don't know the, the name I... leaders are also ah great but yeah. we will have this link in the link will be here yeah so mm -hmm. let's call our next guest yeah, come on, Jared. Okay, so come on, Mr. Chega mais. Oh. <laughs> Chega mais. Oh, so wonderful to have you, you with us, a legend for me, a great reference who share a great knowledge for our discipline, that I read your books and uh, I, I follow your posts, what you write about strategy leadership everything so thank you so much for being here with us and i believe Buriti agree with me right Buriti? yeah yeah totally yeah i'm very happy very happy and i have some questions for you jared <laughs> prepare okay. yourself that's good because uh <laughs> it'll be very short if, if you... <laughs> perfect and to start our conversation i do like i do like to ask you to introduce yourself just to remind people who are watching us, please. Well, I'm Jared Spool. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know what else we need to talk about. Uh, but yeah, I, no, I, I think it's yeah. enough. <laughs> I love it. So uh, I have a first question for you, another one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nowadays, many designers of all levels want to talk about strategy, connect with the company's strategy. They say they want to sit at the business table. Can you tell us, in your view, where we are getting right and where we are wrong in this conversation? What do you think about it? Um, okay. Uh, well, the first place we're wrong is there is no table. <laughs> 
So, so everybody thinks there's a table that, 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 that big decisions are made at. I, I don't know where this came from. I think, I don't know, King Arthur and the round table. I'm not sure <laughs> where, where, where this table idea came from, but, but there is no table. I hate to break it to you. Decisions are not made at a table. Um, sometimes they're made in meetings, but, the, but most of the time they're not even made in meetings. What they're, where they're made sort of on the fly. Uh, dis important decisions are often made either because that's the way we've always done it, or somebody has to make a decision, they don't wanna wait, so they just use what information they have at their fingertips and they just make it. Almost always that, that information at their fingertips, if there hasn't been substantial research, is going to be just a guess. It's like, well, this seems like the right thing to do, let's just do it. If it's wrong, our customers will tell us. <laughs> and and, and it, there's, it's because there's this urgency to making bigger decisions because the longer you wait to make a big decision, the more the, the teams that have to execute on that decision don't know what to do. So everybody focuses on just getting the decision out of the way. So what's going to be in the release? I don't know. Let's, let's just make it this and this. We have the teams to do that. We'll do that. Why is it this and this? Well, because we have the teams to do that, right? Not because it's what customers need, not because um, it's, it's the right thing to build, but because they have to build something and they don't have any more information than that. And so if we really want to influence the decisions, then we need to A, know what the decisions are before they're made. And then we have to make sure that the people who are making the decisions have access to relevant information, right? If we want them to decide on what customers need, then they have to have that before they make the decision. And, you know, the mistake that I think a lot of people make is they're like, well, they'll make the decision and then we'll tell them it's the wrong decision and they'll let us go research and find out what the right decision is. That's not how it works. Right. Once the decision is made, the decision is made. They've told people they don't they don't go back on their decision because it's too expensive to go back on the decision. So they're just going to do what they're going to do. And so if you really want them to know uh, uh, how to make the decision, then it's up to us to make sure we get them that information. And and so that means that the research has to be done before the decision is even something that somebody has to make, right? So if we're trying to figure out, for instance, what's gonna go into the next release? Well, many organizations have something that looks like a roadmap, right? A roadmap has uh, various components on it. It has, you know, what we're working on now, what we're gonna work on next, what we're gonna work on after that. And, things show up on the roadmap because people said, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea to do this? And it's like, sure, I don't know, maybe. And so they put it on the roadmap, right? That's another one of those decisions. Now it's on the roadmap. So when it's time to say, okay, we've shipped this release, what are we working on next? They say, well, let's look at the roadmap. Here's what we put down for next. Well, why did we put those things down? I don't know, seems like a good idea at the time. So. Do we want to influence decisions? Well, sure. We have to influence what goes on the roadmap. We have to make sure that things that go on the roadmap go there because they have been identified as things customers actually need, not some great idea that somebody had or, you know, somebody said, well, wouldn't it be cool if, if we use blockchain? Sure, we can use blockchain. Let's put it on the roadmap. Why? I don't know. I mean, nobody really knows why we use blockchain, but there it is on the roadmap. So we have to do it now or, you know, at least keep putting it off and eventually we'll do it. And uh, uh, that, that's, that's the thing, right? You, you have to get in front of the decision. So if you want to be strategic, you have to know what the decisions are coming and, and get in front of them. So that's, that's, that's the overly simple answer. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Jared, but, you have been uh, talking about your strategy, maturity and culture and all these things when we're talking about design within the companies. But uh, talking about the, the growth of our industry, we have so many designers um, 
bring hiring nowadays. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, we um, are we showing the real impact we can deliver as designers in this moment, in this moment to, to when we are growing as, as discipline in the industry? Thinking about that, thinking about this, this part of uh, to be part of the influence and these things. The, the number of designers doesn't talk about whether we, there, there's, not a, there's not a relationship ah, okay. between the number of designers and whether we have impact. Whether right. we have impact is whether change happens in the world that uh, that 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 makes a difference to the people who care about what's delivered. So that's the customers and the companies, you know, the executives from the companies that deliver it. And it doesn't matter to them if it was one designer or 20 designers, right? Mm -hmm. It's just do they get the change in the world? And What's the change in the world that has to happen? Well, they have to make things better for people, right? The, you, you have to improve people's lives. Otherwise, you know, your product isn't any different than anybody else's product. So, uh, you know, if I buy laundry soap, I don't really care which laundry soap I buy. So I buy the cheapest price laundry soap. But we don't want software to be sold or, or apps or, or hardware or whatever it is we're working on from a design perspective. We don't want those things to be sold based on lowest price because they're identical to everybody else's. We want them to be sold because we've created quality. We've, we've made the product substantially better. So look at a company like uh, Apple, right? Apple sells its computers for more than anybody else in the world. Apple sells its phones for more money than anybody else in the world. And yet they are the standard by which everybody judges everybody else's computers and phones, Yeah. right? Everybody else wants to be Apple. Everybody says, well, it's mm -hmm. not an Apple, but I got it for mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, 20 euros. Okay, that's great that you got it for 20 euros. But at some point, um, it, it's got to be, uh, uh, you know, it's not going to work the way you want your phone to work. It's not going to work the way you want your computer to work. So how does Apple do that? Well, they, they ship a higher quality product. Interestingly enough, they ship few products, right? They don't have that many products in their product line. You compare Apple to Samsung. At any given time, Samsung is selling 20, 30 phone models. At any given time, Apple is selling five, right? So Samsung has four times the number of models, possibly at one quarter the quality of the Apple product. So they're basically making a trade-off. Mm -hmm. And Samsung goes for people who don't want to pay Apple dollars but they have a cheaper device. And Apple just says, nope, this is what we're gonna do. And how do they do that? They provide a great experience to the customers who buy them. And you know, not everybody loves it, not everybody buys it. That's why Samsung's still in business. But uh, it, it works, right? That's, that's, you know, they're the one, the, Apple is the biggest company in the world or in the top three in any given moment, right? And so uh, how does Apple do that? They ship a small number of really high quality products. They've invested in design. So how do you show that design is influential? Look at the biggest companies in the world. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. You talk so much about this, uh, I don't know, but this, this uh, uh, a good moment to, to talk about the difference of uh, strategy and tactics, because you talk so much about that. The difference of uh, UX strategy and UX tactics or UX operational way to, 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 to make the, the things. And 
in this case, I suppose uh, the most important part is to, to create or to define this strategy, this strategy to, to make the, the UX or the design so important to the company. But um, I don't know, usually it is, uh, it's made for, for the leaders, I don't know, I suppose. And how do you think this uh, it's can, it's can, can be possible to, to do this, to, do, to, to create this uh, strategy to make the company more focused on the, the UX or the design being the, the UX team of one or something like that, not so, so much designers in the, the team or we don't have a leader, we have just uh, one or two operational designers and we need to make the company uh, see the importance of the UX, how they, uh, these designers can create this strategy. Yeah, tricky or... <laughs> um, well, I think it's a big question, right? I mean, there's lots of ways. For one thing... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Um, one of the difference between tactics which are sort of low level activities to do things mm -hmm. and strategy, which is basically a high level plan to accomplish an important goal or objective, right? The big difference between those two things or one of the big differences is that tactics are situationally agnostic. That's a, that's a, a big English term that basically means um, it doesn't matter when you do them, right? Uh, uh, UX tactics are things like creating wireframes or yeah. figuring out menus, uh, you know, the menus for your navigation or conducting usability tests, yeah. right? Uh, drawing journey maps, right? These are tactics. Yeah, our job description. Yeah, yeah, writing a job description. These are these are these are tactics, and um, uh, uh, tactics are you know if we if we were talking about a chef, uh, tactics are slicing onions, and cutting up vegetables, and boiling rice, right? And if you're going to make a perfect risotto. You have to learn how to do all those things. But what, but those are tactics, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, strategy says, is the risotto the right thing to serve for this yeah. meal? If I'm cooking for a wedding, should I make risotto or something else? Right? And, and so, so that's strategy. Strat, you know, if I'm opening a restaurant, risotto has some advantages. One thing is you can make it ahead of time and then warm it up, right? So you don't actually have to cook it during the dinner service. Mm -hmm. However, um, uh, it doesn't keep. So if you make it ahead of time and then people don't order it, then you end up with lots of extra risotto and you have to throw it out. And then next day you have to do it again. And sometimes you run out and sometimes uh, uh, you have too much. So then it becomes an inventory issue. And the question is, as a kitchen, do you have room to be throwing away food or running out of your best menu items? And if you don't, then you have to decide, well, is risotto something we wanna make at the time the person orders it. But the problem with that is it takes 25 minutes sometimes. And that's a long time to make a customer wait for their meal. So, so a strategy is gonna take those types of things into account. A UX strategy is gonna take into account, what do we know about our customers and users? What do we know about their needs? What decisions have already been promised to people? Where are we in the cycle? What do we know about um, uh, what, what 
the people are really trying to do with the product that we, we ship, right? So many times we just deliver something because it works without knowing if it actually does the job for the users. And a good strategy would make sure that we actually know that before we make the commitment. Just like a good chef would decide whether risotto even makes sense to have on their menu or they should go with something else that they can cook fast or prep and not worry about having to throw it out. Hmm. Or maybe they just do a single menu, a prefix menu where they know what everybody's going to order because if they, if, you know, if they have uh, uh, 25 people sitting down for dinner, there's only one choice. Boom. Everybody gets the same food. Uh, there's, there are a couple of Michelin star restaurants that when you make a reservation, you have to make them six months in ahead uh, in advance. You don't get a menu. You get whatever the chef wants to cook that day. <laughs> Right. That's a strategy. Yeah. Because that chef knows exactly how many meals they're going to make. When you make your reservation, you tell them whether you have any uh, uh, food allergies or anything like that. They will make you something, but you don't get to choose it. That's a strategy. Right. That's a very strategic decision. If people don't like it, they can go to a different restaurant. But if you are really confident and good at what you do, you will make sure they like it. You'll do the research. You'll do the work. And people will pay big amounts of money uh, for that. As we say in the U.S., big bucks. Hmm. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so a solid strategy is a money-making strategy. A solid strategy is one that, that gets the customers exactly what they want when they want it. And these are the secrets behind places like Netflix or Disney or, um, uh, or, or Apple. And this is a product decision, right? Well, you know, the difference- We are there to support that with yes. working with user experience, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a team effort, right? Mm -hmm. Raphael mentioned the UX team of one. This, there is no such thing. Unless mm -hmm. you're in a company of one, no. no such thing, right? Everybody in the company affects the user experience. And because everybody affects the user experience, there is no team of one. There are just people who don't realize they affect the user experience and therefore accidentally screw it up. No, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And talking about the value of user experience within companies, you wrote about it and you spoke about that. The steps seem simple, but not simplistic. The actions we must take for this to happen are simple, in my view. But are design leaders making this attitude more complicated, making wrong the choices for this action in some places? Because here in Brazil, we can see that. It's, it's simple, but they like to make some, something complex inside companies. What do you think about that? What is the, the reason of make the user experience disciplines so complex inside within companies? Well, I think some of it is just not understanding what, what, what your job really is, mm. right? I think some of it is just believing that your job is to decide, do we have square corners or round corners? Do we have gradients or is everything a solid color? Do we, you know, are things purple? Are they, are they blue, <laughs> right? And, and, and we think that's, those are design issues right we think that that you know in a wireframe this screen goes to this screen goes to this screen we think that that's that's design which it, it there are design decisions there 
but in the big picture, it's it's not it's not where most of the problems happen. Right, most of the problems happen because people are making decisions without actually knowing what they should know. Okay. Imagine you land in a city that you've never been in before. And your job is to go someplace important. Um, let's say it's to a wedding, right? You get to your hotel and you have to go to the wedding. And there's, a, there's somewhere there's a wedding being held and you need to be there. Maybe it's your wedding. So you need to be there, but you've never been in the city before. So you have no idea how to get there. Well, one way to get there would be to take five steps out the front door of the hotel and then go to the left. Why to the left? I don't know. My gut thinks that that's over to the left. I have no data, but I don't know. Last time I was in a city, I didn't know. I went to the left and it worked. So I'm going to go to the left. And then I'm going to walk 30 steps. I'm going to hey, this doesn't look right. So now I'm going to turn to the right. And why am I going to turn to the right? Because I don't know, feels right. I, I, I think it's over there. And now I'm going to walk 50 steps in that direction. And I'm gonna say, you know what? I think I should turn left here. And I keep doing this, just, just making decisions as I go based on what I think is the right thing to do. Do you think I'd get to the wedding? No, right? I would never get to the wedding. I'm just gonna randomly wander around a city I don't know, right? This is how we design products. We put things in, why? I don't know, feels right. I was in another place and I had a product like this. So it, that's what we did. So let's do that. This is how we design products, right? If I'm smart and I, need, I know I need to go, I might use some actual research. I might get a map. I might hire a driver. I might the day before do a little test run to see if I can get there during the right amount of time. I might look up where there's gonna be traffic and where there's gonna be construction, right? I would try to get as much information as I can to make sure that I get to the right place. But that's not how most products get built. So here's the thing, there's always a strategy, but most people's strategy is based on guessing everything particularly the most important things. And that's why we end up with the messes we end up with. Yeah, but in, in this case, I don't know, but I see the, the strategy um, as the thing which I, I decide with this knowledge, but this knowledge is reached with uh, Tactical things like uh, research, like uh, desk research, like uh, interviews, and of course, uh, after that, the prototyping and tests and etc. But the strategy it's about the decision using the knowledge uh, that we reach it with this uh, with these uh, tasks. This is the, the the correct way, or all a strategy is is a plan. A plan to get from where we are to where we want to go. Okay. Right? And, of course, we use whatever information we have. But there's this element of, of confidence, right? And you can measure confidence on a scale of 0 to 100%. Mm -hmm. Right? 100% is we are absolutely 100% sure because we've done the work and we've double checked and triple checked and we know how to, what decisions to make to get to the result. And 0% yeah. is I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. The absence of research is guessing and 0% confidence is I'm guessing all the way. So the first thing is, is that we never talk about what our number is. Are, are we, you know, we have a decision we have to make. Do we put in, do we spend the time to put in 
the ability for the user to save the data in multiple formats? Or do we just give them one format? Okay. How do we know what we should do? Right? Most people faced with a decision like that will guess. Yeah. And will they guess right? No, probably not. The odds are against them, right? It's not a 50-50. It's not a coin flip when we're guessing. It's usually somewhere closer to 90% likely to get it wrong, 10% likely to get it right. So uh, uh, that guess is not going to get us there. And uh, so that's, you know, the wandering around the city, not knowing where to go, but just guessing every time you have a decision to make. And uh, it's not the way to, 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 to fulfill a plan, right? It's, it's not, it's, it's, your odds are very small. So how do you want to succeed? You, you, you do some work. You talk to customers. You ask them what they're going to do with the data. You ask them where the data is going to get used the next time. So now when they're saving their file, you know what file formats they need. You've talked to them. You've seen what they're trying to do. That's research. Now, we can research our way with building prototypes and usability testing, right? I can build a prototype completely based on guesses and then give it to people and see where it fails. That's sort of like building a bridge across a river <laughs> and then driving cars across it to see if it works. And because it's unlikely to work if you've never built a bridge before, you don't have any experience to build one, you'll just watch the cars plummet to their de depth. And then you sort of say, oh, we have to change the bridge. Let's change the bridge and try it again. And how many cars do you have to see fall off the bridge before you decide maybe this isn't the right way to build bridges? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a punch. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one more? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, the market is global, the issues are very similar, and Buriti and I are asking this to almost all our guests. What do we need to pay attention for the next step within companies to increase the design discipline, to be careful about design and strategy? Can you give, give us more tips about that? Um. Well, the first thing is, are you focused on outputs or outcomes? Right? If you're focused on outputs, you're, you're, you're worried about delivering something. Can we get something delivered? Can we get a design wireframed? Can we get a usability test run? You know, can we interview customers and write up the results? Right? Do, did we write a report? Did we deliver the report of everything we know about our users? Those are outputs. Outputs are about delivery. And the problem with outputs is there's no, um, there's no definition of quality embedded in the output. The only thing that matters is delivering something. Uh, and once you deliver it, you check it off. You say, I'm done. I delivered it. Outcomes are the change that we see in the world. Outcomes happen because we deliver something. So we have to deliver something. Otherwise, why would anything change? It certainly wouldn't change because of anything we did. So if we want to see a change in the world because of something we did, we have to deliver something. But not all changes are the right changes, right? We, a change can either make something better or it can make something worse. Most teams have no loop of information, no feedback loop that tells them whether a change has actually made something better or worse. 
Have you ever upgraded to a new version of something? And from your perspective, it's worse, right? I mean, we've all had that experience at some point. That's why we resist upgrades. We'd, we'd be like, eh, I don't know, right? It happens. Sometimes we upgrade things and it makes things worse. Well, how did that happen, right? What did they not know about me before they decided to make those changes? And uh, why didn't they warn me that things were gonna get worse? What could I have done to make sure things didn't get worse? And so we're, we need to know, did we make something better? Did we make something worse? And then we have to decide up front, which would we like? Would we like to make things worse for people? Is that acceptable? Or is it only acceptable to make things better? At which point, what do we need to do in our process to make sure that everybody, when they upgrade or buy our product, their world changes for the better? So we have this idea of what we call a UX outcome. A UX outcome focuses on the X, the experience of the user. And because we want it to be a better experience, we talk in those terms. So it basically says, if we do a great job delivering this product, you know, the next release of this product into the world, that's the delivery part. How will we make someone's life better? Most teams have never talked about this. Most teams, if you start to talk about this, they don't even know what the answer is because they don't know what the release is supposed to do because they've only focused on just getting it out the door, getting to the delivery part and then they go work on something else. We delivered it, okay, get back to work, we got things to do, right? What we want is to have a conversation that says, if we do a good job, we will make somebody's life better somehow. Today, I was talking to a client about a process that takes a business owner three hours, but technically the process should never take them more than 20 minutes. So they have to do this thing every week. It's basically part of payroll. Every week they have to spend three hours on this. But if we can make it take 20 minutes, we can give them at least two and a half hours of their week back. Two and a half hours of their week across 52 weeks a year is more than two and a half weeks. So Every year, we give them two and a half weeks to spend with their family, to do other things in their business, to use their time as they want, not doing this thing. So if we do a good job on this payroll feature, we will give people two and a half weeks of their year back. That's compelling. right? But we have to make sure we actually do it. We have to not just ship something and assume it happened. We have to ship something and then see, did we actually reduce the time it takes from three hours down to two, you know, 20 minutes? And to do that, we have to have a whole system of being able to detect and measure that A, it takes three hours to begin with, because most people don't know how their product is used. And that it could take 20 minutes. If it was if we designed it right. The other day on a different team, I was talking to a de designer who was asking me, I can do it this way, I can do it that way. And I said, well, what is it actually used for? This was an application that's used on factory floors. And I said, well, what do people use that for? And she said, I don't know. I, 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 no one's ever told me what they use it for. Well, then what difference does it make? Well, they've told me it's, it's, it's not working. Well, what's not working about it? I don't know, they didn't tell me. Did you ask? Eh, I tried to, but the product manager didn't have any answers. Why not? Because the product manager doesn't know what it's used for. It just stuns me that we ship products and people don't know how they're used. They need a field, so they put a field in a form, but they don't know what anybody does with that field. So. Does it work? I don't know. Yeah. 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jared, it was really nice to have you with us at this time. I it just, was really nice to be here. I just have to thank you for your time, patience, and answers. <laughs> so, thank <You're> you. <laughs> Muito obrigado. <laughs> Wow, interesting conversation, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I have. <laughs> What did you think about it? Yeah, I have some, Yeah, I have. I have mixed feelings, but <laughs> but I suppose the 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 content of this conversation has good things to discuss in another videos and other Bond UX too, because Jared uh, bring, uh, brought us some things um, controversial, I suppose, and uh, some things uh, in a common approach that we are us usually uh, listening about that. But I think uh, some things probably will, will have <laughs> um, uh, different opinions. Yeah, by our 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 audience, and I yeah. think, and I I think no, I would like you guys tell us, send us yeah, send us comments in this video about this conversation, about these topics, about the the answers. Yeah, I I'm I looking, think I am looking forward to that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a different approach and a different reality, right? We are yeah. in Brazil. Uh, our culture, our companies are different. Uh, yeah. The work style are different. So he brought something interesting, but I, th I, I, I thought, oh, this not connect with my reality here in Brazil. I don't know. Yeah, uh, some some parts. I, some I suppose, parts. Yes. Yeah. Sure. I, I suppose it's uh it's important to say because. We always say about that in, in our uh, program, in our show, Bond UX, when we're talking about the necessity to adapt. Yeah, the, yeah everything adapt we have the, to adapt. Yeah, yeah. And this, is, this conversation is important because that, because we can see the, uh, the power of the, the message, the content, but... Uh, we have to be warned about this because some things need to be adapted to be understood understood very well because probably we will not work in our uh, in our uh, reality. Understand the and, context, understand yeah. the stru structure, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. I think we have some uh, roles and and attitudes that you have to think to connect all. This is no, yeah. the useful no. or not. Every, yeah, because the, the important, right? the impo I, I think, Rodrigo, the Good Morning Wax is a huge, huge show because, because it's my show. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, because uh, we, 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 um, I don't know the, the correct word for that, but we try to, to bring the discussion. This is the, the importance for us, uh, for, for this program. We, we bring the subject to open for discussion. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. It works too, it works too, yeah. But it's because, because that, this, uh, this initiative is so important, uh, in my opinion. Always. Because we, we, can, we can see different approaches, different point of views, and we can uh, start to think about uh, every um, answer, every point of view, and we can test in our day, in our uh, uh, jobs. This is the, the value of our uh, um, Initiative yeah, here. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, the main point of our goal here is bring mm -hmm. something yeah. to yeah. Tell increase. us, tell us if you and please, yes, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell us. Comment here. Send have us been, messages. Yeah, have been working for you. <laughs> and this is the point. 
like the video, share the content, comment, and enter in your Telegram. Yeah, connect, totally. connect with Please. us in in Please. Instagram, LinkedIn, every. Every, everywhere yeah. right please please so uh i think that's it so yeah yeah let's stay yeah, with let's us go. stay with us because we have more episodes yeah so. we need to rest because we have a lot of episodes to record <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you very much it's Oh, 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 oh,